Hello and welcome to the Power Apps Portal's quick start presentation. Now if you've used the general Power Apps products, you may have noticed that when you create an application, it tends to only be available to other users within your Office 365 accounts in your organization. Now for many people this can be a bit of a drawback. So what Microsoft have now done is they've re released a new product called Power Apps Portals. And this allows you to create Power Apps applications which are available to the general public. Now before we start, I thought I'd mention um, some things which you might want to consider. For Power Apps Portals, you're going to find that it's actually nothing like the general Power Apps product that you may have used. Um, if you're from a web development background, you're going to find it pretty easy to get your head around. So for Power Apps Portals, you're going to need some kind of web knowledge, which normally includes things like HTML and CSS and JavaScript. But Microsoft have also included a programming language called Liquid. So if you've got some knowledge of that, then that's also going to stand you in good stead for learning Power Apps Portals. So let's get started. So here I am at the main Power Apps creation interface, and this is where we create all our apps. And we can see here there's one called Portal from Blank. So that's the one you want to select. Now, when you set up your general Power Apps, you have what's called a default environment. An environment is just like a namespace, really. It's um, just a place where you keep all your apps. So when you create a portal, you're going to be given a choice to create a new environment. And uh, to work with apps, you need a database. And you need to create a different environment. So if you're testing apps, for example, you want to test out portals, then it's probably a good idea to create a new environment. So if we click on the button here, create new environment, you can just fill in some general information here like the environment name, just give it any name, select your region country, and at the moment I'm on the trials, but there is a production um, option as well. And then just click the create environment button. Now this could take a few minutes to, to set up, um, so um, don't panic if it's um, taking some time. So I'm now in my test environment and here we have the option to create a portal. So if I click on that, now we have to um, give it a name. So for example, I'll just call it the usual test portal and we need to give it a name on the URL as well. So now it's possible that that, that name's already in use. So if I give it a different name, try that. That's already in use as well. So Test Portal 55, it seems to like that. Choose your language and then click on Create. Now this could be very quick or it could take some time, it really depends. So, once your portal has been created, you're going to get this screen coming up. Now, if you scroll through it, you'll see that it looks like a normal kind of web page style thing. Um, so on the on the side here, you've got your various um, things that you can click on, like components. And here you have different sections you can add, similar to Power Apps. And you've also got portal components here as well. Now you might be thinking, well. There's a lot of things missing from there. What about command buttons and things like that? Drop down boxes. Unfortunately, Power Apps Portals bears very little resemblance to the general Power Apps. 
For Power Apps portals, you're going to have to code all these things in yourself. So buttons and things are going to have to be coded in with HTML. So you're going to need a knowledge of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and there's also another language as well called Liquid, which is actually used by Shopify, but for some reason Microsoft have decided that's the language they want to use with Power Apps portals. You've also got different themes here and different templates that you can use. So by clicking on different images here you can you've got the option here to change the image but that's really pretty much it you can change all this of course there's a form component on here and I'll show you how to use that very shortly now if you come back into your power apps portals environment you can see here I've got my test portal that I created um, on the left hand side we have something called data. So if we click that and we click on entities, we're now in what's known as the common data service. And this is where you can create entities to hold your data. So think of entities as tables, SQL Server tables, Microsoft Access tables, that kind of thing. It's a storage for your data. And Microsoft give you some ones that I've already created here which you can use so if I click on the address one we can see these are all the fields that they've created for an address entity and you can use any of these in your Power Apps screens in your in your forms so if we come back into entities and what I want to do is I want to create a new entity so I click here at the top, New Entity, and let's fill in some data here. So I'm just going to call it Staff Member. It gives you a plural name. I just ignore all this. And I'm going to ignore all this and just keep things as they are here. If I want to put attachments in, I could click that. And there's other settings here you can set as well, but I'm not going to touch these for now. And just click on Create. And now I can go ahead and add any fields that I want into that staff member entity. So to do that, click on Add Field at the top, give it a name, so I'm going to put um, what's the data type, well I want it to be text, is it required, is it searchable, advanced options here you can specify the length. I'm just going to leave all these as they are. Click done. There it is, staff name. We can add another field. address so we can add another field age for example we'll make that whole number Okay, it's saying that we already have a field with that name, so we we'll just call it staff age or something like that. Click done. Okay. 
We can put in social security number perhaps. Click done. So that's the fields created for my entity. Now I just need to save it. And in the list of entities here, I click on entities. We can see staff member is there. I click on that. Now at this point, I can create a form for my entity. And that form is going to be used in my Power Apps portal screen. So if I click on forms, now at the top here, you can add more forms in. Um, you can't actually have more than one main form. So I'm going to select the main form that we have and if you click here you can edit it. So this is it, this is like the blank canvas where you can start to create your form. At the top here you've got a section um, it's got general written here um, and there's a couple of fields in here name and owner now this section can't be deleted I don't know why I don't know why we have name and owner there but it's there anyway if you try and delete it you're gonna get a message saying sections with locked or required fields cannot be deleted but what you can do is you can hide the section but for now I'm gonna leave it there so what I want to do is I want to add my fields that I created onto this screen. So before you can do that, you need to add a, another section for yourself. You can, of course, add it in the general section if you want to, but I'm not going to do that. I am going to click here and select a one column section. If I come back to my fields, I'm going to put staff name in there, so I click on that. And you can see they're all going in slowly now. Let's just zoom in a little bit of the screen. I'm going to put address in there as well. age and social security number now I'm not going to hide anything here I'm going to keep them all here but what I will do is click on this section here and hide this so now if I save this form and I click on publish that form should now be ready to be used on my portals page so here we are back at our web web form and now we want to add a little form in here to display those controls that we just created so we add a form into an area here called section and within that we have a column and that's where the form is going to sit so if I click on that column come along here to the component section and I want to select form so there's our form now if you click on it we can then adjust the properties and from here you can either create a new name or you can use an existing one that we created before so what, what I'll do here is I'll just create a brand new one um, we'll just call it that form test 5 now we need to select our entity which was called staff member which is down here somewhere select the form layout which is called info and the, the mode here is going to be insert because I'm going to be adding data 
for success if the record saves successfully then we'll show a message here we can always change this if we want to or we can hide the form once it's been um, the record's been saved successfully advanced settings allows us to put captures on for anonymous users and authenticated users but I'm going to turn that off so that's pretty much it and it should save automatically once it does we can just run it by clicking the browse website button here at the top and there's our form now if I put some information in here something like that and now if I hit submit displays our message submission completed successfully and at this point I could now go and look at my data so now I've come into my um, section here which shows the entities and if we look along here we've got the staff member one on the screen and I now want to show the data that I've just saved so it's not as simple as just clicking on this data column that doesn't really tell you anything in here so the best way to do is to create a view so in here you've got some sample views already but if you want to create a new one just click on add view and We just call that staff, click create. And at this point you can select the fields you want to show on the view. So I'm going to show them all. So I'll put staff name, address, age, social security number. And you can see the data is going in here already. So this is the data that we entered on the web form just now so it's been saved back into the common data source here and you can probably set up filters and things here as well and once you've got your um, your view set up you can then save it and publish it and here it is, staff, click on it, and you can see the data that I, I entered there from the web form. So hopefully that's given you an idea of how to use or get started with Power Apps portals. Um, they're still being developed by Microsoft, they're still in their early stages, so things will improve as we go along. Um, as I said, there's, there's not, not a lot of resemblance to the general Power Apps um, stuff at the moment. This is very much web based, very much HTML, JavaScript, that kind of thing. But um, you can do some powerful things with it. So get started with portals and see how you get on. If you like this video, please click the button to like it, or why not subscribe to my channel? Or you can even download my free Power Apps for Newbies book at www.powerappsfornewbies.com.